Hey everybody, Ryan here at E-Trailer. Today on our 2023 Subaru Outback Wagon, we're gonna be showing you how to install the draw tight trailer hitch receiver. But before we get into that, let me just take a minute, check this out and make sure it's gonna work for you. Putting a trailer hitch on a Subaru makes sense. You know, people use these to do a ton of different things, whether you're using a bike rack or a cargo carrier or even pulling trailers around. Um, if it were me, I would want a hitch that would be up to all those different types of tasks. And this one's gonna allow you to do just that, uh, regardless of what you're trying to accomplish. This hitch is gonna be different from some of the others. For the most part, it's gonna be visible. So it's gonna hang down below the vehicle. But honestly, on a Subaru, you know, it's, it's not a huge deal, uh, at least to me. You know, I think accessories work really well on these, um, as opposed to the other ones, which look good too. It's really just gonna be your personal choice, but. Uh, those are going to be more hidden you know you won't be able to see this cross tube and everything uh, so you know the choice is yours and, and what one you like uh, i do want to address so today we have an outback wilderness edition uh, this fits it just fine and if you don't have this exact sub model not a big deal this is going to work with you know all the different types of sub models whether it's uh you know more of a base model one up until your fully loaded type ones this is going to be a class three hitch so it has the two inch by two inch receiver tube opening, uh, really common size, ton of different accessories that are gonna work with it. It is going to use the standard five eighths pin and clip. Keep in mind though, one doesn't come with the hitch. If you need one, not a big deal. You can grab it here at E-Trailer and uh, something to think about too, if you end up buying a new accessory, a lot of times they're gonna come with a pin and clip. So just keep that in mind. The safety chain openings I do like, they're really large. Um, and will provide us more than enough space to use just about any size hook that our trailer might have on it. Something else that separates this one from some of the other hitches is the weight capacities. It's gonna have some, some pretty high numbers. So if you plan on kind of pushing, pushing it to the limit a little bit, this one uh, may be the one for you. But with that said, it is gonna have a 675 pound maximum gross tongue weight rating. And that's gonna be the amount of weight pushing down on the hitch. So that's more than enough for just about any bike rack or cargo carrier, uh, kind of give you an example there. As far as the maximum gross trailer weight rating goes, that's gonna be 4,500 pounds, and that's gonna be the amount of weight that is pulling on the hitch. So the weight of your trailer, plus anything that you might have on it. Um, I do always like to suggest, though, it's never a bad idea just to grab your Subaru's owner's manual, that way you can check in there and make sure that your vehicle can handle that much weight safely. And with that in mind, you know, if you are gonna be pulling a trailer around uh, to stay legal and safe, you're gonna want the lights to work. And to accomplish that, you can always grab some trailer wiring. I'm gonna give you a couple of measurements and you can use these to help figure out what type of hitch mounted accessories will work best. From the ground to the top inside edge of the receiver tube opening, that's gonna be about 15 and a half inches. So if you plan on pulling a trailer, chances are pretty good. You can use a ball mount that has a straight shank. If you don't have a wilderness edition, you could probably use one that has an inch or two rise in it uh, to, to get everything level. From the center of the hitch pin hole to the edge of the rear bumper, that's gonna be about six inches. And you can use that to help figure out exactly if any of those folding accessories you might have can be stored in that upright position without hitting the back of your Subaru. But other than that, at the end of the day, you know, a hitch you really can't go wrong with. It's gonna look decent and uh, get the job done. In terms of installation, this one wasn't too bad. Um, and compared to some of the other ones, uh, those require you to take the rear fascia off, but it's not that huge of a deal. This one might be a little less intrusive, I guess you could say. Um, but either way, I really wanna let that, you know, let that aspect make your mind up on what one to get because it's something you'll have to do one time and then you know you're done with it so um but with that said why don't we go ahead and get started on installing this one together now so you begin our installation we're going to be underneath the back of our subaru and we are going to need to let the exhaust come down uh, that way we have some room to work before we do that though i like to take a strap and just run it from side to side that way we can kind of control how fast and how far uh, we actually let the exhaust come down let the exhaust come down. We're going to have some rubber isolator hangers that we need to remove. And I want to mention from this point on, anything we do to one side of our vehicle, we're also going to do to the other side because it'll be set up the same way. But one hanger will be here, one kind of on the other side of the muffler. Uh, 
over here. I'm going to like to start with uh, this one because it's a little easier to get to, but you can spray these down with some soapy water and you can just take a big pry bar or big screwdriver and work uh, one end of that hanger off. There's going to be one more in the center. You just follow the exhaust forward. And we'll work this one off as well. And then once that one is off, you're able to loosen up the strap a little bit and let the exhaust come down a little ways. What we can do now is remove our heat shield. So it's going to be held in place with four 10 millimeter head screws. So go ahead and get all those pulled out. We'll go ahead, lower this down, and set it off to the side for the time being. Now if you look at the bottom of your frame, we're going to have some rubber plugs. We're going to remove the three closest to the back. So this one, and these you can just take a screwdriver, kind of pop them out. And these are going to allow us to have access to all of our attachment points. If you continue uh, forward, you're going to have one more plug that we can remove, which is this one. This will be used as an access hole to get our hardware in the frame because it's a little bit bigger. We'll pop that out. Then to actually get the hardware in, what you're going to do is take pole wire, take the coiled end of it, feed it through this hole, and run it towards the front of the car. And you're trying to get it to come out of the access hole here. So sometimes you get lucky and it drops right out. More times than not, you'll have to kind of reach your uh, finger in there and kind of help guide it out. Like that. And then for this one, you want to take this spacer block. It's a little bit thinner, a little bit smaller. Slide that over. Take your carriage bolt and that will thread onto the pull wire. And then you can feed that hardware up into the frame. And if you pull out on the other end of that pull wire, It'll drop right down like that. I'm going to do a similar thing for this attachment point. And with these, you know, you can kind of eyeball the distance there. And I like to put a bend in that pull wire. Just kind of makes it a little bit easier for it to come out. So with this one, you're going to take this style spacer block, a little bit thicker one. Another carriage bolt. And essentially do the same thing that we did on the other one there. That will slide up through the frame. And pull down on that. Once you have the hardware in, you can go ahead and take that plug and just push that right back into the frame there. Now you can grab your hitch and uh, it's gonna come with two flat washers. You're gonna tape one on each side there. Just tape it over the attachment point, cut a hole out in the middle, that way your bolt can pass through and you're gonna do this on each side of our hitch. Just to go over the hardware that we're gonna use to cure the hitch, once we raise it up into position, we're going to remove our pull wires and then you're going to have a conical tooth washer and a nut. You're going to put the conical tooth washer over the bolt with the teeth facing up towards the hitch and then simply just uh, put the nut on. And that's going to be the same combination for all of our attachment points. 
Now with an extra set of hands, we can take our hitch and raise it into position. So you wanna drop the pull wires through the corresponding holes in the hitch. And we're able to uh, raise it up. Get our hardware to drop through. Remove the pull wire like we talked about. Take our hardware combination and get them started. If you're having a hard time getting the hardware started because the bolt wants to push up, you can take the washer and just apply a little side pressure to it. That'll help keep it uh, steady, making it a little bit easier. And then once we have all of the hardware in place and hand tight, you can come back with an 11 16 size socket and snug it all down. With everything snug, you need to make sure and come back with a torque wrench and tighten everything down to the amount specified in the instructions. What we're able to do now is trim out our heat shields. That way they'll clear some of the hardware in our hitch. There's a diagram and some measurements in the instructions which I followed and put a mark there where uh, I need to cut. I'm gonna use a hole saw just to have a, a good clean look to it, but you can use a pair of snips or, or what you got uh, around. As long as we have that opening there to clear, we should be in pretty good shape. With our heat shield trimmed out, now we can go ahead and get that lined up and reinstall the opposite way that we removed it. Now we can raise our exhaust back into position. So you want to re-lubricate the hangers and everything's a little bit tighter now with the hitch up here. The easiest way that I found is to start on this one first and then it makes the others uh, a little bit easier. But with these, just really lubricate them and you can usually just push them back on by hand. We can go ahead and remove the shred. And that'll finish up our look at in our installation of the draw tight trailer hitch receiver on our 2023 Subaru Outback Wagon.